Hello everybody and welcome to a Scoose X coding tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to code. Um, this is going to be a more advanced tutorial on player collisions. Uh, it's going to require basic or actually moderately advanced knowledge of uh, JavaScript. Um, so you're going to need to know you know just the basics of objects, functions, and stuff like that. So let's get into this. So here's my brand new program that I've got started up and uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to start by defining some basic variables. We're going to define a player variable which I like to use P for short because it's shorter to type. Uh, P for player and then just say uh, x0 y0 and let's give it a width and a height of 30. Um, we're also going to be defining uh, previous player coordinates, so uh, be sure to throw in that, like so. And now we're going to just create a draw equals function loop, set in a background, and for basic, te basic testing purposes, I'm just going to quickly uh, add in a uh, rectangle at p.x, p.y, p.width, uh, p.height, and I don't know, I might give it a slight radius just to make it look better. But um, what we're going to now do is, so we've got our player. Now let's write a collision box function. So we're just going to write var cool box equals function because that's quite simple. And we're going to take four parameters, the x, y, width, and height. And since this is a collision box, we're going to need to uh, write in... Uh, essentially, if you don't know how collisions work, basically what we do is we take our player and we detect based off of different sides and the sides of the collision box, determine if the player is inside the collision box, and if so, move the player out. And we have to do that before we draw the player. So uh, we're going to go in the order of move the player, run the collisions, uh, draw the player. Move the player, run the collisions, draw the player and it will look smooth. So, uh, and this is the, uh, the system that I'm going to be showing you is the system that I've been using in games such as Grayscale World or my Ultimate Platformer. So I, I really, really like this system. Uh, it works in as many dimensions as you want as well. So I've also, I also use it in all of my uh, 3D games. So, first things first, if... if um, what we're going to need to do is we're going to first detect the player's left edge, which is at p.x plus p.w, and we're only going to do this one dimension at a time. So if the player's x value plus the player's width value, which is the right side, is great, greater than the value for the left side of the collision box, and we, we also need to do this same thing for the y value, so we're going to do that. Uh, we're also going to need to detect, if the player's beyond those two points, then we know that it's, uh, that the player is to the bottom right in the collision box sense. Um, but in order for the, to know that they're overlapping, we also need to check the other sides. So that's, um, that's simple. We just say p dot x must be less than, uh, x plus width, and p dot y must be less than y plus height. And if all of those are true, then there, then we have a collision, which is essentially the player and the block are overlapping. And we can test this by typing in a return true, and if you don't know what return does, which I didn't for the longest time, um, it's essentially a way that a function can communicate with an outside value. So the, whatever is inside these return brackets will be outputted to any variables that you make equal to the function. So in this case, so for example, var um, var coals equals coal box or whatever. But we don't need to worry about that. So I'm just going to uh, just write in um, print line, and then I'll just write a coal box at 100, 100, uh, 200, 200, which is not going to show up at the moment, but I'm going to quickly, for debugging purposes, add in a rectangle at x, y, width, height, 
And there we go. Now we have our box. And also for the purposes of testing, I'm going to add mouse x equals, or not mouse x, huh, p dot x equals mouse x, and p dot y equals mouse y. And if we did everything right, then yep, the value will change to true whenever you enter the collision box. Now, okay, so now we can delete all this unnecessary code. We are going to keep our collision box. The next step is we need the player to actually move before we can continue coding our collision box. So for right now, I'll just say collisions need to be implemented. Uh, if I can spell, I think that's right. But you know what? No one's going to look down the code anyway, so who cares? Um, <laughs> well, the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to write a var move player function. I like writing um, all of my code into functions because it makes my draw loops ex extremely simple uh, most of the time. Um, I have had some things where I've uh, done like menu coding in the draw loop, and so I needed the game to be simple, but lately, especially on programs like my uh, geometry, everything has been done with functions. So what we're going to be doing here is just writing a simple move player, and before we do that, I'm going to create a simple um, key pressed equals function. Just, this is this is all basic uh, JavaScript, so I'm and you should know how to do this. Um, so I'm not going to go over it. But essentially, what we're doing is we're just creating a way of uh, keeping track of the keys that have been pressed. Uh, I have actually had to um, ah, shoot. I have actually had to help people uh, with this because. Um, it's because a lot of people will try to detect the key code in the draw loop, and it doesn't work. You have to you have to do it this way for accurate uh, button tracking because key code only represents the last pressed character, which in a key press key release setting is going to be whatever was is is not going to be the um, the same way uh, if that makes any sense. So what we're going to do now is for the sake of collisions at the moment, I'm not going to worry about gravity. Uh, we can do gravity at some point if uh, we want, but just basic gravity. But for right now, I'm just going to say if keys uh, up, if keys down, and all we're doing is we're just going to change the variables uh, based off of the. Um, oh, shoot. All we're doing is we're just changing the variables based off of uh, what keys are pressed. So I like to do it in the order of up, down, left, right, because then it's just super easy. P dot y minus equals. We're going to create a new um, thing called p dot speed. So uh, speed 5. Uh, 5 is probably a bit much. Uh, 3 is probably good since we're not exploring giant worlds. Um, I have done stuff with speed. People get really mad if you don't get your speed uh, if you don't get your speed right, so I like to, um, well, actually, uh, <laughs> fun story, one of my biggest complaints on, uh, Grayscale World, uh, my, the, one of my first big programs was that the player was too slow, that's, that's literally all that I got from people, other than, um, other than also, I had a part where I, um, I tried to debug, I, uh, had tried to debug it, and I failed, and, there was a part where that was uh, completely broken, but other than other than that, if keys dot up, down, left, and right, and now our player should move around. Uh, shoot, nope, the player won't move around because right now I am. There's nothing in the draw equals function, so I'll just quickly add to the draw equals function move player, and we could have all just written all that code in the draw equals function, but I like it, having it as uh, one function because it's simpler and it looks better. So there we go. Now our player can move around the canvas. Now comes the actual collisions, which can get ridiculous. So first thing that we're going to want to do in our basic move player function, which all of this code I'm not going to explain because it's pretty straightforward. 
This I do need to explain, though. What we're going to do as the first thing before we move the player is we're going to store their previous coordinates. This is super important because when we get to the actual collision, we need to determine which direction to throw the player out on, and getting the player's previous coordinates is the most reliable way that I've found. Because if you do it right, you can get the collisions to move, and the player will act accordingly. Um, which is what I did in uh, Grayscale World. And the moving collisions, I was able to do so many things like trampolines and stuff because of the way that the moving collisions worked. So now I'm just going to create a P... I'm just going to say P.Previous, and this is where that previous coordinate came in, dot .x, and I'm just going to make that equal P.x, and P.Previous dot .y equals P... Dot wow, equals square bracket dot .y, that won't work. Um, and so now, all, well, all that that does is it essentially stores the player's previous coordinates before the player is moved. You cannot put this down here, otherwise it won't work. So, the next thing that we need to do now is we can actually implement the collisions at this point. Um, the collisions are quite simple. All that we're going to do is we're going to say, if the player is inside the box... Um, if their previous coordinates on the x-axis are outside the left side of the box, we're going to throw them out to the left. If it's outside the right side of the box, we're going to throw it to the right. If it's outside the top of the box, we're going to throw it up, etc., etc. And so all we're going to do then is just if, and now we're going to essentially take these variables that we wrote, except we're going to move them to the previous coordinates. So p dot previous dot x plus p dot w. And, but instead of greater than x, we're going to say less than x, because we want to see if it's outside. And um, you're, I believe, yeah, you're also going to want to say less than or equal to x, otherwise this will utterly fail, um, because uh, the player will get stopped, and then we'll get pushed to the outside and whatever, but then it won't actually. All we're going to say is, if that's the case, then p.x equals x plus w, or just p dot x equals x minus p dot w. And that will be the first set of collisions. Now we can do the same thing on the y-axis. And if you look through the, um, ah, p dot t, what, are you, what even is p dot t? Uh, if you look through my, um, if you look through my uh, code, you will find this a lot in pretty much any game that has collisions, including my 3D, 3D games, except this is all updated to have a z-axis. And now all we're going to do is we're just going to copy this, paste it down here, and now instead of p.x plus p.w, we're gonna, just going to say p.x and p.y, because we want the, uh, the left edge and the, uh, bot, or we want the, um, the left edge and the top edge. And we're also going to flip the signs... So we're going to say greater than or equal to, and x plus width, and y plus height, and we're just going to say that y equals y plus h, and x equal, and p dot x equals x plus width. So essentially what we've done is we've taken the previous coordinates, seen which side of the box they were outside of, and moved the player accordingly. So this should, yep, we now have accurate pixel perfect collisions with the player being able to move around, and it's really quite incredible, and I, I love this. Um, and you can see it here, um, the corner's catching, so when I move down, nothing's happening. Uh, same thing goes over here. Um, it's extremely accurate, so if there's anything that's overlapping, it will count the players being on. Of course, if you want to do crazy stuff like the player tumbling off the edge, you're going to have to programming your collisions differently, but this is how I like to do it. Um, you can also add in like momentum and stuff as well if you really are into it. Um, now, the last thing that I want to do, I guess, um, I mean, you can just do this and have other things. Um, I also have a, uh, a more updated version of this. This is pretty rudimentary because uh, the collisions can't move at all. If the collisions move, then that will mess up everything, and I have an updated version in which the collisions can move, uh, which I used in uh, Grayscale World, and I have it on my profile if you look for if you look hard enough. Um, I believe it's called something like 2D Platformer Collisions, and there's a little demo there. Um, 
And I, I've, I've updated this algorithm quite a, quite a number of times, but this is the basic static collisions function. Static meaning that the collisions don't move. Um, and it does work. Uh, if you want to implement gravity, you also can do that. Uh, for implementing gravity, all you're going to want to do is run the same thing, but then on the y-axis, you're going to want to... Um, on the on this one right here, you're going to want to... Uh, and uh, this in the event that this one right here has a collision, this one right here is a collision, all you're going to want to do is just add um, your gravity, gravity equals zero in both of those, and your collisions will still be accurate. Um, I think that's pretty much it. And, and all, oh, also, if you do that on the uh, the x-axis, if you uh, if you add in um, momentum on the x-axis, you're going to want to do the same thing. Zero out the um, you're going to want to zero out the uh, the momentum whenever you hit a wall. So yeah, um, all in all, I think we're pretty much done. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my little coding tutorial. Um, I've gotten this request a couple of times uh, for people want to know how do I do collisions and it is a little bit difficult if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, this is the algorithm I created personally. Um, I like it because it is really simple but it works extremely well for uh, static collisions and also it's not too hard to upgrade it to uh, moving collisions. Uh, you simply store your uh, pre store the block's uh, previous position and add that to the equation. And um, and so, yeah. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this little coding tutorial, like I said before. Um, and my name's Skusex, and I'll see you next time. Bye!